So let's look at question three. In question three, we are asked figure two shows an incomplete circuit for an electromagnet. Complete the diagram to show how a battery should be connected to A so that the polarities of P and Q are south and north respectively. In part B, we are asked to state two ways in which the strength of the electromagnet in A can be increased. So there is a typing error here. I'm going to correct uh, that. Now, this is an electromagnet. What is an electromagnet? It consists of a coil usually wound on a soft iron material. When we pass current through that coil, it makes that coil to be a, a magnet. Now, how do we determine the polarities of the magnet? We use the right hand grip rule. If this, this pen is the coil, I'm going to hold the coil in my right hand. The thumb will point in the direction of the north pole, while the fingers will show the direction of the current in the coil. So when you look at point Q, we have been told that, I mean point P, we've been told that at point P, there will be a south pole. Let me just, yes, at point P, it's supposed to be a south pole. That means that this part here will be a north pole. So I'm going to hold that coil like this with that part up there being the north pole. And I can be able to see that according to my fingers, the way my fingers point, they point in this direction. Let me just see whether I can be able to ink this slide. Of course, I can be able to do that. So over here, since this side must be a north pole, then according to the way I have held my hands, my fingers have pointed in this direction. I just need to have one arrow on the diagram. Just one arrow and the rest of them follow. So it means that all these will be arrows pointing this way. Uh, it's a bit difficult to ink this particular diagram here. But I know current will flow like this in the conductor, which means that it's coming like this from the battery. That means this side of the battery must be the positive side and the other side must be a negative side. So I draw maybe a battery of two cells, for instance, with this being positive and this being negative. That is how we find the polarity of the battery a. So this question was just about using the right hand grip rule. So on the diagram, you can go ahead and indicate the directions of the current, as I'm showing you here. And on the other side, definitely it will be like this. It's a bit challenging inking this particular slide but you get the point should have used a, a different color to the color that i've used there for visibility but hopefully you can see that the arrow in which direction it is pointing making a p to be south and the q to be the north pole of that magnet and uh, do not confuse what we did in the previous question which was on electrostatics with what we are doing here, which is on magnetism. Many students confuse these two. For instance, when I'm marking these scripts, I usually get the students who, when they are talking about um, magnetism, they start talking about the magnet being charged. You see, when you talk about charges, you are talking about electrostatics. And sometimes when you are talking about charges, they bring in the idea of South and North Pole. Don't get confused here.
South and North Pole, these are poles of a magnet. And when we talk about magnetism, we talk, we talk about a material being magnetized. As opposed to when we talk about electrostatics, where we talk about a material being charged. So being careful, be careful when you're talking about this tool. Uh, part B, we are asked to state two ways in which the strength of the electromagnet in A can be increased. There are two ways we can do this. We can increase the number of turns in the coil, increase the number of turns in the coil, and number two, increase the amount of current flowing through the coil. Let me point about, uh, out one or two errors the students make when they talk about number of turns. Many of them talk about number of coils. That is wrong because in this diagram, I only have one coil with the several turns. The moment you start talking about increasing number of coils, you will definitely get it wrong. So get it first time that when we talk about increasing the strength of an electromagnet, we increase the number of turns, not the number of coils. Be careful at that point. The other one would be would be the, the simplest answer to give as far as the amount of current is concerned is just to say that increase the amount of current flowing through the coil. Don't go to tell us how that current is increased. If they wanted you to say that, they would have stated it, it here. State how the current in the coil can be increased. How? We can increase the EMF of the battery, or we can put a rheostat in series somewhere along that conductor and vary the resistance that will also vary the current in the coil. So many of them state like increase the, the voltage um, or vary the voltage or something like that. It's always good to go direct to the point. Because when you say increase the voltage, you are leaving it to the examiner to, to, you are leaving the examiner to fill out several blanks. And examiners are not supposed to do that. You are supposed to tell them what the answer is. Don't assume that they will know when you say increase the voltage or increase the EMF that that will lead to the current increasing. There are so many other factors in that circuit which can cause the current to not to increase even if the EMF has been increased. So never leave doubts in your answer. Never leave gaps for the examiner to fill in. That means in preparation for the exam, be very clear on the points. Strength of an electromagnet is varied when we vary the number of turns uh, and we increase the amount of current flowing through the coil and of course sometimes changing the shape of that coil so that we bring the, the, the poles close together and the best kind of design is a U-shaped magnet. But they just asked us for two ways in which the strength of the electromagnet can be increased. This brings me to another point. If in an exam you've been asked to state two things, two factors, even if there could be three factors, just limit yourself to two. Because this is what, what happens when you state more than one factor. The examiner will read the next factor. If the next factor is wrong, they mark it wrong and subtract one from the other two. You may have got the other two factors correct. But if you state the third one and it happens to be wrong, you lose a mark. Why should you lose that mark? You know why they subtract a mark? Is because they assume that when you are stating three factors, you are not sure of one of them. So you are stating them again for the examiner to choose the correct one. They are not supposed to do that. So if you are asked to state two things, just limit yourself to, to those two things. Don't be generous 
and give three or even four. Just state two but because by stating more than the number that is required, you are risking the marks which you already have. So that's what I can say about this topic. Uh, it comes from a topic in Form 2 Magnetic Effect of Electric Current. So again, go there and study more about magnetic effect of electric current. Otherwise, let's move to question 4.